Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this uh, Blitz Chess postmortem video. This is a postmortem of my uh, Blitz Chess game number 129, where I played, uh, well, my opponent kicked off with f4, the bird's, bird's opening, and I played uh, e5, which is the From Gambit. So uh, if you've watched my videos, you've seen this one before, uh, but uh, each one is a little different. <laughs> In fact, um, so my opponent doesn't screw up the opening, which is what I think happened the last few times. Uh, I screw it up. So let's see where, it, where I go wrong. Um, so e5, that's the gambit, and uh, taking is the common reply. Um, if he plays e4, then he's uh, transposed into a king's gambit. Um, and then d6, continuing the gambit, and bishop takes. Knight f3 is the main line, and now uh, g5, the wacky, the wacky main line here in the from gambit. <laughs> Although you could just play a knight f6, but I was intrigued by this uh, g5 move, and uh, yeah, the chess engine actually prefers a knight f6. But if you look after g5, uh, uh, it's interesting. Thinks uh, g3 should be played, d3, d4. Okay, uh, give it time to think it might settle on d4. Um, yeah, there it goes. So d4 is the main move here, and um, this does a couple of things. One is, uh, if the knight gets chased away, the king now has a square to run to, so he's not getting mated along this diagonal, which is what happens in uh, some of those early quick kills. Um, so, uh, let's see. I, I don't know if I've ever uh, played someone who's, who's just gone down the main line like this, so I wasn't quite sure what to do here. Although I have looked at this in one of my videos before. It just shows uh, my memory is not flawless. Um, but for one thing, this pawn is hanging, the, so you got to do something about that. Um, and so you could play h6, just defending the pawn. Um, but the most logical move, having played uh, g5, is to go ahead and play g4, which I did not play. Um, but I just wanted to uh, take a look at this again, try and see if I could remember it better. So knight e5, uh, good square for the knight, I guess. And bishop takes immediately. Um, this is kind of uninspiring to, to play bishop takes. I mean, it's going to lead to a trade of queens, it looks like. Let's check it out. Yeah. I always get that backwards somehow. Let's, let's try this again. Bishop takes, d takes, and queen takes. So I suppose I could play something other than queen takes. Um, but um, yeah, actually, yeah, once you've started down this line, queen takes is really the only move here. And then knight c6. Try and round up that pawn. So uh, this is not uh, all that inspiring a position with the queens off. Uh, so is there another way to play this? So if he goes, uh, if I play g5 and he plays um, knight e5, I have a choice. I guess I could play knight c6. So um, what's the chess engine say? Chess engine says bishop takes his best, bishop e6, bishop f7. So knight c6. What's wrong with this one? Knight takes, b takes. <clears throat> yeah, this is not too inspiring either. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, maybe this isn't a good way to play. If you're playing against someone who knows what he's doing, maybe maybe this is not so hot. Yeah, knight e5, uh, bishop e5 is the way to play that. Okay, well, maybe I'll stop playing around with this. Uh, <laughs> This g5 move and play uh, knight f6 instead. Knight f6, knight c6, way to uh, keep an even game. It's interesting that even though black is a pawn down, the, the chess engine thinks there's, there's enough compensation there where uh, white has no more than a typical opening advantage. Okay, um, <clears throat> so that's that's it for our opening theory. Let's, let's go back to the uh, game. So I played g5, he played d4, and then I played uh, bishop f5, which... Uh, it's just uh, losing another pawn for not much. So well, let's go ahead and see how the game went. Played f6, uh, kicking the bishop. He went to h4. And then uh, queen e7, just trying to um, exert some pressure along here. That was also the idea of uh, bishop to um, f5. I was, I was putting pressure on this square here, the e4 square, just trying to prevent him from playing e4 and establishing dominance of the center. And then sometimes, you know, you can play against the weak pawn later. But uh, this kind of nebulous compensation is not sufficient for the uh, two pawns that I've given up. 
Uh, but the game is not over. We keep playing. I'm just making developing moves now. He harasses my bishop. And I decide to ignore it, which actually uh, the computer thinks is okay. I mean, the thing is, uh, I don't really have another great square for that bishop. If I check here, he can just push c3. Um, and he has to uh, waste a couple of moves to, um, to get his knight out here and to trade it off for my bishop. So he's, he's trading his, his knight, which he's moved a few times, for a bishop that I've moved only once. So, I, you know, I, I gain a little bit in that exchange. And uh, his advantage is not quite as strong as it was before. It's down to only one pawn. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, the chess engine preferred after here to play queen b4 check. c3, and then queen takes b2. Ah, okay, so there's a way to get my pawn back immediately. Didn't notice that. I went to uh, b6 instead. And he plays b3 defending it. I thought, you know, well, I'm creating some weaknesses there. But actually the check and picking up the pawn is probably even better although it does open a file under the king so there is a downside to it and uh, so somehow yeah so it's interesting the, the chess engine doesn't even think it's worthwhile defending that pawn it thinks e3 is a better move and after b3 um, white's uh, advantage is, is diminishing bit by bit and then c4 um, we're down into the range where white just has the ordinary opening advantage so my uh, my opening uh, blunders have somehow been forgiven. Uh, okay, but I don't play the most precise moves myself either. So instead of um, retreating the bishop, what, just knight c5? Knight c5. Ah, I didn't think. Actually, I was thinking about knight c5 in the game, and I didn't think it worked because um, when he takes uh, my knight, it hits my queen. But when I take his queen... Uh, I'm doing it with check. So this is an interesting tactic that I misunderstood during the game. I was thinking about playing here, taking advantage of this pin, and then um, and then I discarded the idea because I thought, well, after he takes here, he's hitting my queen. But now I can take his queen with check, and he doesn't have time to take my queen. Rook takes d1, and then I grab this pawn. So that would have worked out in my favor. Ah, so I misunderstood that tactic. So interesting. Okay, I play bishop g6, queen d2, oh, bishop f2, queen e6, e3. So uh, white's keeping his advantage through all of this. Oh, it didn't like, um, which move? d5, it thinks, should be played immediately. Okay, so it didn't like e3 here. Hitting the queen. And uh, yeah, we're back in the range where white has the usual opening advantage, but not more. And, um, you know, having castled queenside and having this backwards e-pawn, um, I, I felt like I was doing okay here. And um, actually, after rook d3, it gives an advantage to black all of a sudden. So rook d3 was an actual mistake. And um, I think I find the right move here. Yeah, so he keeps his advantage just by playing king b2. Um, you know, his king is exposed over here, and there's this... Uh, diagonal. Um, so he, he can't really step onto those light squares. So he plays rook d3. Ah, I guess that's the problem, is that it puts his, his rook in line here. Um, so I play knight c5, harassing his rook, and top choice of the engine. So hey, I got, I got one right. <laughs> the rook went to c3. Um, the uh, engine just recommends dropping the rook back to d1, but it's always hard to uh, just take back a move, which is what's happening here. And then knight e4. Oh, I didn't play knight e4 right away. Let's cancel that. So knight e4 would give me an advantage. Um, hitting the, the uh, rook and hitting the bishop, and then maybe I could exchange the bishop and grab that pawn. Um, so I played knight to d6 instead. Just wanted to open up this diagonal, and I was going to bring a knight into e4 on the next move. So, a similar idea, but not as effective. Okay, knight to d4, and now I can play knight e4, and, and this still has a good effect. But, oh, the, the best move, the best way to play it is knight d to e4. Why is that? Knight d e4. It 
let's see, after knight c e4 he played rook c2. So after knight d e4, new variation, bishop e1, and I can just grab the exchange. And what happens if he plays uh, rook c2? And knight to d3 check. Ah, this knight here can come in here with check. That's pretty interesting. And if queen takes, and knight takes f2, attacking the queen, and uh, when the queen moves, uh, then you can at least grab that uh, rook there. So pretty interesting sequence. So um, so it's better to take with the d knight because then the c knight can drop into d3 with that attack on the king and the uh, bishop. Interesting. Okay, so I didn't see that, and that's a little too deep for a blitz game. Knight c e4 is okay. And he played rook to c2, one of the choices. Knight takes f2, and uh, queen takes. Yeah, these forcing sequences, you often will be able to play the uh, computer moves. And then bishop takes c2 is the best way. I wasn't entirely sure, but it seemed like this was the right time to cash in. So now uh, he's still got the two. Oh, cancel. He didn't take back. He still got the two pawns. He should take back, right? Let's if he after he takes back. Let's go ahead and put it on the board. Um, I have the exchange. I've got uh, a rook for a bishop, and he's got uh, two extra pawns. Um, and so it's about an even game. Although in this particular case, I mean materially, it's about even. But in this particular case, uh, it looks like the computer prefers black here. I guess because of the activity, his pieces. Um, are not really participating in the game yet. These two guys still need to get into the game. And I can immediately start playing moves like knight e4. So in addition to having achieved a material balance, I have, I have good good squares for my pieces. Um, but he should have taken that bishop anyway. Instead he played knight e6, counterattacking my rook. Um, but this is just not sufficient. I can retreat my bishop, which I do. And then uh, he can grab the knight, but it's just... Uh, winning the exchange but giving up a piece so he's down a whole piece now um, and he played bishop to e2 finally getting his last piece in the game I go knight e4 he goes queen to e1 and now um, I'm getting set up to uh, mate him and uh, this is uh, not the mate just yet after king b1, yeah, so he had to, after king b1, there's a mate in two. He played, uh, he had to play king to c2 here. He can't go to d2. He could try uh, d1. Yeah, king c2 is a mate in six, so he had to play king d1. Um, but then I can start gobbling up pawns over here. So um, obviously a piece up, and then if I get these extra pawns, it'll be an easy win. Um, he went king b1, and this allows a nice finish. So uh, if you haven't seen the game and you want to cover up the right-hand side of the screen and uh, see if you can spot the uh, mate in two. Okay, I'm going to give it away. Um, the first thing to notice is that the, the queen and the bishop uh, form a crisscross pattern which blocks out these four squares. So when this knight is out of the way, all these four squares will be off limits and the king will be forced into the corner. Um, and this crisscross pattern is, is a good thing to remember. It, it happens in uh, sometimes just with two bishops. Uh, for example, with uh, Bowden's mate it's a, is a mate, which involves the two bishops in a crisscross like this, blocking out four squares. Um, so the key move here is knight to c3. And this is a double check. So even though that square is defended by the queen, um, his king has to move because uh, queen takes is not on because the bishop is still checking the king. And there's only one move. And now, of course, you see the mate in one. Queen takes a2. So uh, interesting game, I thought. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And leave any comments you have in the section below. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.